Hi guys, this is Duncan from DigitalDojos.com. This time I'm showing you two podcasting clients for the iPhone and iPod Touch, one called Podcaster and one called Podcatcher. The reason I'm showing you this is because the podcast functionality inside the iPhone and the iPod Touch is pretty rubbish. If I wanted to, for example, listen to Tech News Today, which is a nice little podcast, uh, usually it would be in, start off with the music anyway, so you'd have to go to More and then go back here, you'd have to go to Podcast and then you'd have to find it either through the search or going through. Go through the technology and then find it. Here we go. And you can see here that there should, really should be a subscribe button. You can see you can get each one individually for free, but if you've already got one and you want to find out what the latest one is, you can't do it. There's no way to actually subscribe. My assumption is that uh, they want you to do it in iTunes and then transfer it across. But if you're away from home and you've only got this available, you've got a Wi-Fi network available, 3G, you can only get them individually. So you're constantly checking this page. That's not very useful when you have 10 or 20 podcasts subscribed. You have to keep going on each one, which quite frankly sucks. So that's why these uh, applications have been invented. So let's start with the Podcaster app. You can see here we have a podcast directory, so it's very similar to the uh, iTunes area, so you can discover new podcasts. If I go to, uh, let's go to my most popular and see if Tech News Today is there. It's a really good uh, podcast if you haven't seen it, it's got uh, Tom Merritt on it. So we can select that, and you can see it gives me a nice little information, it gives me the graphic, it tells me all about it, and at the top right we have that button we've been looking for, subscribe, so I can press that and it will go ahead and download. Now with the multitasking functionality, please note that you can't download in the background and it will tell you, it gives you a nice little uh, box that says we can't download this in the background. So make sure you have the app open, which I guess may not be useful if you have hundreds of megs of a video podcast you want to download, you have to keep it. But hey, that's how it works. So you go into the favorites, you can see here it says Tech News Today, 10 unplayed episodes. So you can do similarly what you can do with the iTunes and just go on each one. But do note, that if you do do that, you need to change the uh, if we go back in the settings to make sure that you uh, want to keep more than one. Because I was away and I got four of them, thinking that I'd be able to listen to all four. Because this was set to one, as soon as I quit the app, it only kept one of them. So make sure you do change that. But you have some extra options here as well. And if I go back, you can see we can refresh the podcast list. So if you have 20 of them and you press refresh, it will check for new episodes and then tell you if there is any, and then you can go ahead and download them. So if I go ahead and try and play this uh, with the volume at the bottom, this is the volume down here. You can delete it if you wish. You can also mark it as played and share it by email, but you can notice that um, it's not really, it kind of is the iTunes area, but I'd rather to have the uh, play down the bottom. Yeah, it's very similar to the iPod functionality, but this is the way it works. I'm not a big fan of the interface, and it is a tiny bit buggy. Sometimes if you're playing things, uh, you'll find that you quit out, you come back in, and it will launch you back to the home screen. There's a few bugs here and there uh, that need to be ironed out. Um, quite a few sometimes when I'm going back or trying to find another podcast while one's playing, or if I'm in another app, this is on a 3GS, and if I'm on an application, it will start juddering this. But you can see we have the little play up here, so you can actually use that little widget here to uh, pause the podcast if you need to, and it will do that for you. So that's one advantage, and this is available for 59, sorry, 59p in the App Store, or 99 cents, I guess, uh, whatever it is. Just have a look, it's Podcaster in the App Store. So that pretty much covers Podcaster. Podcatcher is very similar, but it has the interface I like. But the problem with this is that there's a lot of legwork. So if I want to add one, you can see I just all the options I have here is to enter a feed URL. So you can say, copy URLs from Safari and paste them here, which isn't very useful if you have 20 uh, podcasts, and you've got to go and find the URLs of each feed manually and then copy them in. Um, I found it quite a task to try and find the ones that I was doing. And if you want to use the OPML, which usually stores all your podcasts, you have to upload that somewhere, unless you export it from here, and they'll upload it to the uh, Podcatcher website, and they'll give you a URL which you then need to store. Again, it's a lot of leg legwork. So if I were to use Tech News Today, I'd need to find the URL, which I believe is something like, let's uh, see, I think it's uh, leo.am slash podcasts. You can see how quickly I could do this on the other one just through the graphical interface. Well, I'm guessing they might work on this in the future. Let's see if this works. So it finds it. There you go, feeds out it successfully. So you go to the episodes. Now the thing I like about this is if you have multiple episodes, uh, they all just mix into one area. So this is all the unplayed episodes as well. Uh, you can download them. You can see unplayed downloads. 
mark orders play, play all and refresh the feed. So it's more like YouTube subscriptions but in a long list. I really like the way this works. And then obviously if I want to get the, the latest one, I can stream it. Now there is a problem with this, if you quit out of this, notice when it's playing that there's no play up here. You can't use the widget to do it and sometimes if you come back into the app it will keep um, that play button there and you can't actually turn it off, you, might, you usually have to press that uh, the right or the skip to the end and it will uh, stop it. Now they are aware of this so I did email them and they said that they're um, working on it and bringing up an up update very very soon so ignore that for the time being but it's happened. Now you can just uh, download the episode here or I believe uh, you can do this uh, if you, uh, there is a download button somewhere, um, ignore that. <laughs> so uh, that's downloads, you can remove them, you can start them, you can see how much free uh, free is on the actual iPod or iPhone. Into the settings you can see resume, downloads on launch, automatically download. So um, this auto resumes, the other one you have to resume it manually. You have push notifications here, which the other one I believe doesn't have, even though I think they said they did or had a screenshot, because it was formerly RSS Player, I believe that did it as well. Um, but this one seems to have it uh, properly here, and it also uh, resumes from when you're playing, uh, if you quit out of it and pause it, it will resume when you come back in. That was something that was fixed recently as well. And there you see the export to OPML. Instead of doing it by email, they just say where it's hosted at. So if you really want that, then you can grab that, and then you have to copy it back into the thing as well. So I think this is a very capable one. I'd actually rather use this than the uh, podcaster. Um, I think it, the way it works is really nice. Uh, it just looks the part, it looks like an iPod thing, it shows you everything you need to know. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. I like it, it keeps it simple. So I would rather use podca Podcatcher than Podcaster, and I would definitely use either one over iTunes and iPod. Podcatcher is 59p again in the App Store, so exactly the same price as Podcaster. You'll find better discovery with Podcaster but you'll find a better interface with Podcatcher. So it's up to you really, uh, go ahead and grab them if you want. And uh, that's about it. So that sums up the uh, Digital Dojo's podcast app recommendations. There isn't really any more in the App Store, so it's much better than the inbuilt functionality. And thanks for watching this video. Please comment, rate, comment, rate, comment, like, sorry. <laughs> There's no more ratings on YouTube. Um, subscribe if you like these videos and keep uh, up to date with Digital Dojo's.